Welcome to The Reality Revolution. I'm your host, Brian Scott. And today's episode is Unveiling the Mysteries of the Third Eye, a topic I haven't discussed for a while. And I've gathered more information from past episodes. And I wanted to really delve in to perhaps the most important chakra. There is a realm that is talked about in ancient scriptures, revered by mystics, that is unlocked by the third eye. A mystical entity residing within us, yet extending far beyond the confines of our physical selves. This episode is an exploration for those who sense stirrings of a deep consciousness within moving towards their opening with third eye to those that are curious this is your compass you're not merely just listening to this episode i want you to actively engage with this episode because you're about to go on yet another quest that has fascinated sages and scientists for centuries i'm talking about the third eye often associated with the pineal gland. It's more than just a physical entity. It's a portal to higher consciousness, a gateway to a realm where the physical and spiritual converge. My own journey with the third eye began just in meditation, where I grappled with questions that had no easy answers. And then suddenly, in a profound moment of clarity, I experienced the world through the lens of the third eye. It was as if the veil had been lifted, revealing a universe interconnected by threads of consciousness. Colors were vivid, my perceptions deepened, and a sense of profound peace enveloped me. This experience was deeply personal, and yet I yearn to share it for you. I yearn to have your third eye opened. Many out there have tried psychedelic drugs, for instance, and oftentimes they say they hallucinate. They see different figures, energies, patterns. What they're seeing is intelligent energy, which is what you start to see when your third eye is opened completely. Why is this journey essential? Why is opening the third eye important? It's a rebirth of perception. A renaissance of your soul. In our world brimming with chaos and distraction, opening the third eye offers a sanctuary of wisdom and insight. It's a tool for discerning the truth in a sea of illusions. It can be a guide to a more compassionate and intuitive way of living. I'm challenging you to look beyond the seen, to question the unasked, and to awaken this dormant energy within you. The path to unlocking the third eye is as diverse as the tapestry of human spirituality, and herein lies its beauty. From the hallowed halls of ancient temples to the cutting-edge laboratories of neuroscience, the third eye has been a subject of awe and wonder. There's some really good books that you can read on this. The Pineal Gland, The Eye of God by Manly P. Hall is a good starting point. Awakening the Third Eye by Samuel Sagan is a practical guide to the third eye awakening with detailed exercises. And one I'm going to read from today is the third eye by T. Lobsang Rampa in a little bit, which discusses a Lama's experience in their third eye awakening. But just look at what we've seen in the past. Imagine that you're a time traveler journeying back to the cradle of civilization. You stop in ancient Egypt and you see the eye of Horus an iconic symbol etched in the annals of time, revered not as a protective amulet, but as a gateway to higher wisdom. The Egyptians didn't see an eye, they saw a conduit to spiritual insight, a reflection of the pineal gland nestled deep in our brains. Then travel to India thousands of years ago, and here in the spiritual tradition of Hinduism, the third eye is a central theme It is the Ajna Chakra, located between the eyebrows, a focal point in meditation practices. This isn't just anatomy. It's the seat of intuition and foresight. 
Lord Shiva with his third eye symbolizes destruction and transformation, a reminder of the power that lies in inner vision. East Asian philosophies reflect this. In Taoism, the third eye is a symbol of inner knowledge. Think of it as a mystical mind's eye, a concept embraced in Buddhism. The Buddha, often depicted with a mark between his eyebrows, is seen as an enlightened one whose third eye has been opened, offering a lens to the ultimate truth. But this is not just in the East. You can come into the Americas. The Mayans, for instance, were onto something similar with their concept of the inner eye. It was their compass to spiritual realms, a bridge between earthly and the divine. Then you move to the Renaissance. This was a time of mysticism and occult that began to intertwine with the third eye concept. The famous polymath Leonardo da Vinci, intrigued by the anatomy of the human body, might have pondered over the pineal gland considered its spiritual implications. As we approach more modern times, the third eye takes on new dimensions in the realms of theosophy and new age spirituality. It's no longer just a symbol, an ancient text. It's a topic of intrigue for those who have actually experienced their opening of the third eye. Throughout history, the third eye has been many things, a symbol of power, a tool for enlightenment, a bridge to the divine. It's fascinating how this concept has traversed cultures and epochs, evolving yet holding on to its core essence. The promise of a deeper, more profound understanding of the universe. The third eye is more than just the pineal gland. It is more than just the mystical symbols. It is an actual thing that you can experience. And once your third eye is opened, it's truly remarkable. There are many accounts of this. I was inspired to do this episode after reading The Third Eye by T. Lobsang Rampa in which he describes his experience of having his third eye opened. And what happens is you see everything around you much differently. People are not just their bodies. You realize that that's the shell that they're in, but you can truly see their energies and their auras. And when you see that, you can see if they're sick, you can see when they're lying. You can see the unseen world. It is all opened up to you. In his book, The Third Eye, T. Blob Sang Rampa, explains his own journey where he meets a llama and they actually have a physical procedure for opening the third eye. He states, just before my eighth birthday, the llama Mingyar Dondup told me that the astrologers had predicted the day following my birthday would be a good time to open the third eye. This did not upset me at all. I knew that he would be there and I had complete trust in him. As he had so often told me with the third eye to open, I should be able to see people as they were. To us, the body was a mere shell activated by the greater self, the over-self that takes over when one is asleep or leaves this life. We believe that man is placed in the infirm physical body so that he can learn lessons and progress. During sleep, man returns to a different plane of existence. He lays down to rest and the spirit disengages itself from the physical body and floats off when sleep comes, the spirit is kept in contact with the physical body by a silver cord, which is there until the moment of death. The dreams which one has are experiences undergone in the spirit plane of sleep. When the spirit returns to the body, the shock of awakening distorts the dream memory, unless one has had special training and so the dream may appear wildly improbable to one in the waking state. But this will be mentioned rather more fully later when I state my own experience in this connection. The aura which surrounds the body and which anyone can be taught to see under suitable conditions is merely a reflection of the life force burning within, he says. We believe that this force is electric, the same as lightning. Now in the West, scientists can measure and record the electric brain waves. People who scoff at such things should remember this and remember too, the corona of the sun. Here flames protrude millions of miles from the sun's disk. The average person cannot see this corona, but in times of total eclipse, it is visible to anyone who cares to look. It really does not matter whether people believe it or not. Disbelief will not extinguish the sun's corona. It is still there. So is the human aura. It was this aura, among other things, which I was going to be able to see when the third eye was opened. My birthday came, 
and during the day I was at liberty, free from lessons, free from services. The Lama said in the early morning, Have an amusing day, Lob Sang. We are coming to see you at dusk. It was very pleasant lying on my back, lazing in the sunlight. Slightly below me, I could see the Putala with its roofs agleam. Behind me, the waters of the Norbu Linga or the Jewel Park. With the death of the day, the evening was born, and I went to the little room where I was to stay. There came the murmur of soft felt boots on the stone floor outside, and into the room came three llamas of high degrees. They put an herbal compress to my head and bound it tightly in place. In the evening, the three came again, and one was Lama Mingyar Danda. Carefully, the compress was removed, and my forehead wiped clean and dry. A strong-looking Lama sat behind me and took my head between his knees. The second Lama opened a box and removed an instrument made of shining steel. It resembled a bradal, except that instead of having a round shaft, this one was U-shaped, and in place of a point, there was little teeth around the edge of the U. For some moments, the Lama looked at the instrument and then passed it through the flame of a lamp to sterilize it. The Lama Mingyar donned up, took my hands and said, This is quite painful, Lob sang and it can only be done while you're fully conscious. It will not take very long, so try to keep as still as you can. I could see various instruments laid out, and a collection of herbal lotions, and I thought to myself, well, Lob sang, my boy, they will finish you one way or the other, and there is nothing you can do about it except keep quiet. The Lama with the instrument looked around to the others and said, already, let us start now, the sun has just set. He pressed the instrument to the center of my forehead, and rotated the handle. For a moment, there was a sensation as if someone was prickling me with thorns. To me, it seemed that time stood still. There was no particular pain as it penetrated the skin and flesh, but there was a little jolt as the end hit the bone. He applied more pressure, rocking the instrument slightly so that the little teeth would fret through the frontal bone. The pain was not sharp at all, just a pressure and a dull ache. I did not move with the Lama Mingyar donned up looking on. I would rather have died to make a move or outcry. He had faith in me, as I in him, and I knew that he did pucker or muscles in tension at the corners of his mouth. Suddenly there was a little scrunch, and the instrument penetrated the bone. Instantly, its motion was arrested by the very alert operator. He held the handle of the instrument firmly while the Lama passed him very hard, very clean sliver of wood which had been treated by fire and herbs to make it as hard as steel. This sliver was inserted in the U of the instrument and slid down so that it just entered the hole in my head. The Lama operating moved slightly to one side so that the Lama Mingyar Dandup could also stand in front of me. Then at a nod from the ladder, the operator with infinite caution slid the sliver farther and farther. Suddenly I felt a stinging, tickling sensation apparently in the bridge of my nose. It subsided, and I became aware of the subtle sense which I could not identify. That too passed away and was replaced by a feeling as if I was pushing or being pushed against a resilient veil. Suddenly there was a blinding flash, and at that moment the Lama Danda said stop. For a moment the pain was intense, like a searing white flame. It diminished, died, and was replaced by spirals of color and globules of incandescent smoke. The metal instrument was carefully removed, the sliver of wood remained. It would stay in place for two or three weeks and until it was removed I would have to stay in this little room almost in darkness no one would see me except these three llamas who would continue my instruction day by day until the sliver was removed I would have only the barest necessities to eat and drink as the projecting sliver was being bound in place so that it could not move the llama donned up turned to me and said, You are now one of us, Lob Seng. For the rest of your life you will see people as they are, and not as they pretend to be. 
It was a very strange experience to see these men apparently enveloped in golden flame. Not until later did I realize that their auras were golden because of their pure life they led, and that most people would have looked very different indeed. As my newfound sense developed under the skillful ministrations of the Lamas, I was able to observe that there are other emanations extending beyond the innermost aura. In time, I was able to determine the state of a person's health by the color and intensity of the aura. I was able to know when they were speaking the truth or otherwise by the way the colors fluctuated. But it was not only the human body which was the subject of my clairvoyance. I was given a crystal, which I still have, and in its use I had much practice. There is nothing at all magical in gazing crystals. They are merely instruments, just as a microscope or telescope can bring normally invisible objects into view by using natural laws, so can a gazing crystal. It merely serves as a focus for the third eye, with which one can penetrate any person's subconscious and retain the memory of facts gleaned. The crystal must be suited to the individual user. Some persons work best with a rock crystal, others prefer a ball of glass, yet others use a bowl of water or a pure black disc. No matter what they use, the principles involved are the same. For the first week, the room was kept in almost complete darkness. The following week, it was just a glimmer of light was admitted, the amount increasing as the end of the week drew close. On the 17th day, the room was in full light, and the three lamas came together to remove the sliver. It was very simple. The night before my forehead had been painted with an herbal lotion, in the morning the lamas came, and, as before, one took my head between my knees. The operator took hold of the projecting end of the wood with an instrument. There was a sudden sharp jerk, and that is all there was to it. The sliver was out. The lama Mingyar Dondup put a pad of herbs over the very small spot left and showed me the sliver of wood. It had turned as black as ebony while in my head. The operator Lama turned to a little brazier and placed the wood upon it together with some incense of various kinds. As the combined smoke wafted to the ceiling, so was the first stage of my initiation completed. The night I fell asleep with my head in a whirl. What would Zoo look like now that I saw differently? Father, mother, how would they appear? But there was no answer to such questions yet. Now I will note that there is some controversy around this book some claiming that he actually wasn't that llama and it was all fake. But I read that because his description resonates with me for times when my third eye has been opened. We can only speculate as to the truth of this account. So we can see a very intense experience in Tibetan traditions to awaken the third eye. My assertion is this was done when he was eight and this was done a long time ago and now that we've entered into a fourth density environment it is much easier to have your third eye opened and once it's opened it is much more intense than it was before it may take some time and dedication the point of this is that opening your third eye is not as simple as just saying a single mantra for 10 minutes but really focusing on this in my own experience, I started to see energies, colors, and patterns. I used to also become clairaudient. I could hear voices. It's not just what you see. It's a higher level of awareness. It's intelligent energy. This intelligent energy tells you more about the environment that you're in. So it's my goal to activate and awaken this third eye. And there are many different ways to do it. In ancient India, sages and seers they were able to open the third eye through yoga and meditation they realized it wasn't just about physical postures it's a, a deep inner journey techniques like trataka the steady gazing at a single point or object were used to focus and calm the mind gradually leading to the awakening of the third eye Pranayama, the regulation of breath, was another key, a way to balance the energies within and open up the Ajna Chakra. Tibetan monks practice Tumo, a form of meditation that combines breathing and visualization techniques. Imagine visualizing a flame at the third eye, feeling its warmth, igniting your inner vision. 
It's a practice believed to awaken dormant energies within, leading to profound spiritual experiences. In ancient Egypt and Greek mysteries, initiation rites and rituals were believed to actually activate the third eye, and participants would undergo a series of tests and practices, often in complete darkness to enhance their inner sight and connect with higher realms of consciousness. Many of the rituals that you read about from mystery schools are created around opening different chakras, and in particular, the third eye is an important part of that initiation process. In the modern day, the third eye has evolved. Today, we have a plethora of methods at our fingertips. Meditation is still the key, but it's now enriched with guided visualizations, affirmations, tailored to stimulate and open your third eye. Holistic practices like Reiki and energy healing can play a role. These work on the principle that by balancing and harmonizing our energy fields, we can facilitate the opening of the third eye. It's about creating the right internal environment for awakening to happen. I do believe that there is an impact with diet and exercise, reducing exposure to toxins, which are essential for maintaining the health of the pineal gland, which many associate with the third eye. It's about purifying the body to enhance spiritual receptivity. There are binaural beats and chanting that resonate with the frequency of the third eye, and in many ways, continued use of effective binaural beats may be one of the most powerful techniques. It helps to tune your body and create a vibrational frequency, and when done with headphones, it can vibrate your pineal gland specifically. It's important to remember that when you open the third eye, it's not just a one-time event. It's a journey. It's a practice. It's gradual, consistent exploration of these techniques. Whether it's through yogic practices or meditation, the goal is the same, to awaken a deeper sense of perception and connect with a higher state of consciousness. Now, one very intriguing topic is the calcification of the pineal gland and how to reverse it. For many of us, the pineal gland can become calcified, coated with a layer of calcium phosphate crystals. Think of it like lime scale in a kettle but instead of slowing down the boiling process the calcification could be dimming our spiritual awareness what is the cause it could be a mix of things processed foods fluoridated water and environmental toxins a lot of people say that it's fluoridated water and a lot of people will tell you that there's a conspiracy that the water was made that way to actually block our third eyes who knows makes sense to me I drink natural water. I drink natural spring water. That's what I focus on, continually drinking natural water. I don't even like to drink filtered water from the tap. If I know the water doesn't have fluoride and I continue to drink that over a long period of time, I think that does help. The world of holistic wellness offers a treasure trove of methods to help decalcify the pineal gland. First, diet. Feed your body with foods that not only nourish you physically, but also aid in spiritual health. Foods rich in antioxidants, like dark leafy greens, nuts, and seeds, are like warriors fighting against calcification. Another thing is turmeric, a golden spice with anti-inflammatory properties believed to help in decalcifying the pineal gland. Water plays a crucial role in opting for fluoride-free water can help be a step towards reducing pineal gland calcification. I strongly believe sunlight plays a role. Just as plants need sunlight to thrive, our pineal gland benefits from regular exposure to natural light. It's like opening the curtains to let the sunshine cleanse and rejuvenate our inner eye. What is fascinating to me, when I have my third eye opened, I can actually feel its presence. I've actually seen an eye open. And if my eyes are closed and I'm looking up at the sun, there's a light awareness. The pineal gland actually looks like an eye looking upward, also sleeping in complete darkness in a world flooded with artificial light. Give yourself the gift of total darkness at night, and that can help regulate the production of melatonin, a hormone that the pineal gland secretes. It's like allowing the gland to breathe and detoxify in peaceful slumber. 
it's not accessing the light around you. Also, consider supplements like iodine, which can help detoxify the body from fluoride, thus supporting the health of the pineal gland. I've heard Dr. Joe Dispenza talk about this, and he does say that they can become calcified. Those are the things that I think help. When I have talked to some people in interviews, they've said that if you're on that spiritual quest, if there's potential for you awakening, there's some part of your higher self that starts to guide you in what you eat and drink to awaken and open that third eye chakra. There's so many stories of people that have opened their third eye. I've had lots of first canned accounts of it. A lot of times it's different. I actually feel an actual vibration right there in my head that signifies to me that it's activated or it's opened. I would love it if you could share in the comments your own personal experiences in which you believe your third eye was awakened. Because there's a lot of people listening that do not believe this. So a lot of this is just convincing people that it's a real thing. I know one girl that was at a meditation retreat who claimed that hers was opened and her description was very similar to mine. The veil being lifted, colors being brighter, her intuition sharpened, and a deep sense of interconnectedness with the universe enveloping her. And at the beginning, she saw those energies as well. I know someone in Brazil who had this moment where he was aware that his third eye had opened and he felt an overwhelming sense of oneness with creation. He believes this was a glimpse through his third eye. I know someone from Morocco who had her third eye awakened in a dream and she was dreaming of a radiant light emanating from her forehead leading her to seek understanding from this, not knowing what had happened, feeling this vibration in her third eye all the time. And then she started to notice the difference in her perception when she felt this vibration, as if the colors were more rich, the sounds were more crisp. I even read a story of an executive in Japan who claimed that he started meditating for stress purposes, not believing in the third eye, and then feeling a vibration within their third eye, equivalent to where the pineal gland was. And then he started seeing auras and these energies around everybody around him. These are personal accounts that I'm aware of, but I recommend you look at the comments because it's very likely that most of the people listening have had some hint of their third eye opening. And I want you to believe in this. If you don't believe that the third eye can be opened, suspend your disbelief for just a little while because if you can open this, it's so powerful, it's worth a shot. Just suspend your disbelief just temporarily. When you start to see the stories of others, you start to see the patterns in history, it should tell you that this is something that's a real thing. And what we're trying to get at is intelligent energy. That is what is declared by Quo and in the law of one. This is what happens when the pineal gland is opened is you access intelligent energy. Intelligent infinity is what is accessed with your crown chakra. This intelligent energy is captivating. It's really wonderful. It's a vibrant living force, an unseen current that flows through everything, connecting to the vast tapestry of the universe. In many spiritual traditions, intelligent energy is considered the very essence of life, the primal force that animates and sustains all of existence. It's not just energy in the physical sense. It's consciousness, awareness, the very fabric of our reality. In Hinduism, it's referred to as prana, the life force that moves through all beings, an energy that can be harnessed and directed through practices like yoga and meditation. In Taoism, it's known as qi or qi, a flowing energy that maintains balance and harmony in the universe. The mastery of this energy through practices like Tai Chi or Qigong is believed to lead to spiritual enlightenment and physical well-being. In the mystical branches of Western traditions like the Kabbalah, it's understood as the divine light, an infinite source of wisdom and creation. Similarly, in various shamanic traditions, this energy is the spirit, the vital force 
that connects the physical world to the spiritual realms. Some people say that when DMT is released, that it's an accessing of intelligent energy. How do we access it? The paths are varied in, in cultures and beliefs that speak of this. Meditation is the key. It's like tuning your radio to the frequency of the universe. Mindfulness and conscious living are ways that you can access this energy. You're accessing it all the time anyway. Just becoming aware of it is part of the key. I believe if you make it your intention and you visualize, you can start to access this energy. Now, there are several mantras that you can use that awaken the third eye. And the science behind this is that you're vibrating a specific vibration that seems to peculiarly activate the pineal gland within your brain. And it makes a lot of sense. Your vocal cords are very close to your brain. And with the right vibrations, you can even overcome calcification in some cases. Here are some of the mantras that I've collected, but I know for sure that there are many others. And it could be as simple as just vibration. But the Om or Aum, considered the primordial sound of the universe, chanting Om is said to resonate with the third eye, harmonizing mind and body. Om, Shreem, Shreem, Kleem. This mantra combines seed sounds representing energy purification and material and spiritual fulfillment. It's believed to activate the third eye as well. Also, Shivoham, or I am Shiva, this is a declaration of identifying oneself with the universal consciousness. It's thought to dissolve ego and awaken the intuitive knowledge of the third eye. So you chant Shivoham with each breath, focusing on the space between the eyebrows. You feel the sense of ego dissolve as you identify with a greater consciousness. Om Mani Padme Hum is a Tibetan Buddhist mantra, meaning the jewel is in the lotus. It's used for purification, divine energy, and enlightenment associated with opening the third eye. Generally, Tibetans like to chant this mantra in cycles of 108 repetitions, envisioning a lotus at the third eye, opening its petals as you meditate. Another is Kasham which is the seed mantra for the third eye. Kasham is the seed or bija mantra associated specifically with the third eye. It's said to have a direct impact on balancing and opening the chakra. You chant Kasham slowly and steadily focusing on the vibration it creates in the center of your forehead. Another is Soham, which means I am that. This is about identifying yourself with the universe or the ultimate reality. And it's used to enhance self-awareness and connect the individual consciousness with the universal consciousness. It's advised that you sync the mantra with your breath. Think so on the inhale and hum on the exhale, focusing on the third eye area. And the seventh mantra that I found is Ra Ma Da Sa Sa Se So Hung. Once again, it's Ra Ma Da Sa Sa Se So Hung. This Kundalini Yoga mantra is known for its healing properties and is also used for opening the third eye, promoting an inner awareness and intuition. So you just chant this mantra, feeling each syllable's vibration focusing on the third eye. Another technique that I have used in previous meditations, which was very critical in my own opening of the third eye, is a set of eye movements. In meditation, you will find that you can use your eye like a joystick in accessing different states. You can access different sensorial options. You can access your feelings by looking down. You can access your auditory representations by looking at your ears. And by looking up, you can access a visual field of memory and imagination. So in opening the third eye, you can guide energies with your eyes. So you look up into the left, you hold that for 15 seconds. You then look down into the left, you hold that for 15 seconds, each time coming back to the middle, resting your eye in the center 
for a few seconds then looking down and to the right for 15 seconds removing it to the center and then moving and looking up and to the right then looking over to the right ear coming to the center looking over at the left ear then looking directly up at a 45 degree angle essentially trying to look at the third eye when you do this over time you start to sense an energy almost a circuit that's formed and when you go through that whole rotation of each of those particular spots and what at the end you've developed a circuit that links all of your senses into the third eye structure i find regularly doing this with these mantras and visualizations to be incredibly powerful now one of the keys is repetition this is not something that's going to happen after a couple of minutes it does require some dedication and focus if you really want to open this it's something that you work on every day it's something that you create an intention to do let's do a short meditation to see if we can start this process of opening your third eye just relax close your eyes and take a deep breath let the rhythm of your breathing anchor you in this moment picture yourself in a tranquil forest at dusk the sky painted in hues of deep purple and blue the air is cool and crisp filled with a sense of anticipation as you walk you feel the gentle crunch of leaves underfoot the soothing sounds of nature enveloping you ahead you see a clearing bathed in soft lunar light in the center of this clearing stands a large eye looking at you as you approach this you notice that it has an ethereal glow drawing you closer now see a gentle light emanating from within you radiating from the point between your eyebrows this light mirrors the light of the eye creating a connection between you and this amazing energy portal feel the energy of this eye pulsing in harmony with your own as you touch the eye you are enveloped in a radiant indigo light the color of the third eye this light surrounds you lifting you into a realm of higher consciousness You feel as if you're floating, carried by a wave of profound peace and insight. You're in a new space, a new realm. There are no boundaries, no limits. You are free to explore the vastness of your inner universe. Scenes from your life may appear, moments of joy, sorrow, love, and learning. Observe them without judgment. Visualize a path of light extending before you, leading to a door. This door represents your third eye being opened. This gateway to a deeper understanding. And as you open the door, you are bathed in a brilliant light. A light that illuminates truths previously seen. Here in this space of illumination, ask yourself questions or present any doubts or fears. Listen for the answers that come from within the voice of your higher self speaking through the third eye. Your higher self is of this density and energy. This is how you connect to the third eye.
Start chanting the mantra OM, softly and slowly. With each repetition, feel the vibration in the middle of your forehead where your third eye is located. Let the sound and vibration of OM represent harmonizing your energy with the third eye. Om. 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 Feel this vibration in the middle of your head. Now we will say the seed mantra for the third eye, Kasham. 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 You may want to continue using other mantras at this space. Feel free to pause and do that. As you continue and you focus on your third eye, begin to visualize a small flame within the indigo orb. This flame represents the awakening and activation of your third eye. See the flame growing steadily, fueled by your breath and intention. Its light is warm and inviting, illuminating the space of your third eye. Imagine the flame expanding its light, filling your entire head with a warm, soothing glow. Feel the warmth spreading from your forehead throughout your body. As the light fills you, envision it clearing away any blockages or doubts, leaving only clarity, insight, and awakened intuition. Recite some affirmations to reinforce this activation of your third eye. Say them silently or softly. Repeat them to yourself with conviction and feeling. I am in tune with my inner wisdom. My third eye sees beyond the visible. I trust my intuition and inner guidance. I am open to the wisdom of the universe. My third eye guides me to deeper understanding. With each breath, I connect more deeply to my intuition and inner guidance. I trust in the journey of awakening. Each step reveals new insights and clarity. I am a vessel for intelligent energy. It flows through me, bringing enlightenment and transformation, and I am aware of this intelligent energy and see it now. 
My third eye is a beacon of light, illuminating the path to higher consciousness. I am attuned to the deeper truths of the universe, accessed through my third eye. I am grateful for the insights and wisdom that my third eye awakening brings to my life. With every meditation, my third eye becomes more vibrant and active, enhancing my spiritual vision. I honor the ancient wisdom of the third eye, integrating its teachings into my daily life. As my third eye awakens, I feel a deeper connection to all beings and the universe itself. I am fearless in my pursuit of spiritual truth, guided by the inside of my third eye. Every moment is an opportunity for spiritual growth, guided by the wisdom of my third eye. Now accepting these truths, take a moment seeing your third eye open and move your eyes up and to the left hold it it helps to intone a mantra to create a greater vibration now rest your eyes in the center for a second now look down into the left hold it Hold it at the center once again. Relax. Now look down into the right. Now bring it back to center and relax. Now look up and to the right. Now hold it in the center and relax for a second. Look directly at your right ear. Bring it back to center. Relax and then look at your left ear. Bring it back to center and look down at your nose. Now bring it back to center, relax, now look up at your third eye at a 45 degree angle and hold it. Very good. You can feel the energies moving up into your third eye. You can visualize the fire within it as it begins to radiate. You can feel light entering and a greater awareness. Now allow the flame to fade while keeping the sense of warmth and insight. Take a few deep breaths, slowly bring your awareness back to the present moment. 
gently open your eyes, carrying with you a sense of clarity. Your third eye has awakened. If you continue this process, it will open and activate. And please share your experiences in the comments. There's so much more to know about this. And you can go the hard route. Like the reading that I gave from the third eye by T. Lobsang Rampa. But there are also ways for you to open it without such unusual intervention. And once your third eye is awakened, you will see an entirely unseen world. This will awaken so much more opportunities for you to be of service and for you to evolve on your spiritual path. You can find all episodes of The Reality Revolution at therealityrevolution.com. And welcome to The Reality Revolution. Thank you.